Anytime there's been a format shift, there's been a need to take existing content and adapt it for new formats. Mono to stereo, stereo to 5.1, and now 5.1 and even 7.1 to immersive and beyond. A key part of those format shifts has been upmixing older recordings and mixes to utilize them in new mixes. Today is no exception to that, but the landscape of mixing formats has dramatically changed. With the proliferation of formats including Dolby Atmos, Ambisonic, Sony 360, RO3D, and more, producing immersive mixes is becoming more and more complex. It's no longer just about upmixing lower channel count recordings, it's also format conversion, encoding and decoding, binauralization, and even downmixing. You might be dealing with a quadraphonic recording that you need to upmix to a 13.0 Sony 360 bed. It could be a DTS mix you need to encode to Ambisonics for YouTube VR, or maybe binauralize. You might have a film you mixed in RO3D for festivals, but now you have a distribution deal and you need an Atmos mix. Maybe you're delivering content to an immersive theater, but you only have the capability to mix in 7.1, so you're upmixing to get those height channels and tickle all of the meters. These are the types of problems that you might be faced with in today's immersive mixing world, and it's where a tool like Pintio fits into your toolbox. Pintio started out in 2013 as a 5.1 upmixer, but today it's capable of everything I just talked about and more. With the full version, you get 48 formats and binauralization. You just select your starting format, the format you need, and Pintio does the rest. Upmixing, downmixing, format conversion, ambisonics encoding and decoding up to third order, and binauralization is all available within a single plugin with just a few clicks. Unfortunately, YouTube's support of anything beyond stereo isn't very good, so we won't be able to do any listening tests, but I am planning a future video comparing a few different upmixing plugins, so get subscribed if you want to see that. Instead, let's take a closer look at Pentio's interface and some of its features. First, if we look in the settings, we can see a few options including low latency mode for live applications, an option to enable on-phase DSP for backwards compatibility with older Pentio plugins, and the ability to turn on binaural monitoring. Below that, we can change the channel order of the plugin. The default is film order, but we can change that to SMPTE order or any other channel order you might be using. We can even select different input and output channel orders, which is useful if you have a plugin that uses a different channel order than the rest of your session. You also have the option to color code the plugin to your heart's content. In the main section of the plugin, we have our inputs on the left. You can adjust the input gain of the entire signal or even tweak individual channels to get the right balance. You can also mute or solo individual channels. We can set the plugin to a minimal UI mode to save space on our screen, or open up a visualizer to get even more detail. Our outputs are on the right, and like our input, we can trim the overall output gain. By enabling the gain mode, we can also tweak the gain of individual channels, but that may affect how close an ITU downmix is to the original content. Again, like the input, we can mute or solo individual channels, but we can also deal with them as groups. In the center, we have our upmix controls. You have the option to adjust the amount of sound output into each channel group. For example, I can tweak the center channel volume or turn it down entirely if I don't want to utilize it. I also have three modes, default, discrete, and composite, which changes how the center channel is synthesized. There's even a sweep control to move center channel content between the left and right speakers. Our surround channels can be adjusted as groups, or we can link them all to be controlled together. There's an option to boost our side channels, which moves some of the content from the rear surrounds to the side surrounds to get a more front-focused mix. There's three modes for synthesizing an LFE channel. Off, which disables it entirely, Boost, which adds LFE content while keeping it in the main channels, as well as Split, which acts like bass management and removes low frequencies from the main channels and routes them to the LFE instead. We can set the frequency cutoff for our LFE channel, which also acts like a filter when our existing content already has an LFE channel. When in boost mode, we can use the diverge control to share base content between the left and right channels, as well as the center and LFE, which can help prevent overloading the center channel. The gain control at the top allows us to balance the amount of base between the LFE and main channels, or just change the volume of the LFE in split mode. When working with height channels, there's four modes to choose from. Low, Raise, Max, and Mute, 
These change how much energy is routed to the height channels and in what manner, allowing you to tweak the sound. Selecting the Drop Vox option eliminates any center content from the height channels, which as the name suggests can help you remove dialogue from the height channels if necessary. Tilt mode shifts energy in the height channels forward, giving you a more front focused mix. Lastly, we have a shelf option, which gives us a high shelf to tweak the high frequency balance in our height channels. For formats with bottom channels, we get four more modes, share, push, slam, and mute. Like the upper channel high shelf, we get a low shelf to tune the bottom channels. These features give you a ton of flexibility to tweak your sound to make sure you get the best results possible, but all of this power doesn't come for free, and at $700 for the full version, it's certainly not cheap either, but it's still a lot of power for that price. For comparison, Halo Upmix 3D from Nugent Audio is the same price, but it lacks binauralization capabilities and can only upmix. The 3D Downmix plugin will add another $400 and lacks ambisonics decoding. All in all, I'd say that makes Pentio a really valuable tool. It can do so many things all packed into a single plugin, and if you're doing immersive mixing, it really can change your workflow and vastly improve it and simplify it, which I think is really useful. Anyway, that's it for this video. If you like this video, if you think Pintio is a cool tool, definitely hit that like button. If not, feel free to hit the dislike button. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave those down in the comment section down below. And as always, if you want to see more videos like this one, definitely hit that subscribe button.